Grace and peace to you. Today we are covering 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and chapter 3. In chapter 2, Paul recounts his ministry in Thessalonica, how he conducted himself, and what he taught this church. Remember that Paul faced much opposition wherever he went, both from people and from the devil. The Romans felt threatened that the gospel of the kingdom usurped their authority. Jewish people felt threatened that they would lose followers, as did those that worshipped pagan gods, Gentiles. The roots of all this is, of course, jealousy. Satan wants to undo the work of God, and in order to do this, he uses tactics to defame the messenger or destroy the message. The enemy uses accusation, and he lies. He is the father of lies. So Paul does defend his integrity and reputation here. He reminds the church of the truth, how he ministered to them as a father, how he supported them, how he comforted them, and how he taught them the gospel. He exhorts them to walk worthy of God. I think this is a word for us today, and one we should think about no matter how long we have been a Christian. It's interesting to me that since January 1st, these words have come up to me now three times. First, earlier this month in Colossians 1.10, which says, Walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Then this week, I was thinking about the divisions in the body of Christ and about the church. And I was reading in Ephesians 4, and here these words came up. Walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. We are all called to be conformed to the image of Jesus, to be salt and light in the world, and to walk in love and in unity. So I encourage you to read Ephesians 4. Here's your homework. And also further on into chapter 5 because Paul tells us how to walk that out in our daily lives, how to live the word of God. Now, as a third witness of these words, Paul teaches us to walk worthy again in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 12. Beloved, this is God speaking to you and me. Three times in just over a week, I'm reading Walk Worthy of the Lord in three different places and in the Bible. And I have to tell you, these words like jumped up off the page at me. So I'm asking myself, all right, Lord, where am I not doing that? What do I need to change in my life in order to live this out, to walk worthy of you? So I'm asking you that too. How about you? Can you share some ways God is teaching you how to be fully pleasing to him? What areas have changed by the power of the Holy Spirit? Prayerfully, we aren't the same as we were when we first believed in the Lord Jesus. Prayerfully, there's been some change in our lives. Now, Paul continues on in chapter 2 and into chapter 3 of how he longed to see the believers at Thessalonica again. But Satan hindered him. And so he sent Timothy to see how the church was getting on. Paul was very encouraged to get a good report from Timothy. The church was continuing on strong in the faith and spreading the gospel throughout Macedonia. Now this is really amazing considering that Paul had only been with them a short time and that they surely had no New Testament to read and probably not a lot of the Old Testament scriptures to read from either. This tells us that the Holy Spirit was powerfully at work here and that Paul's prayers and remembrances of them were effectual. I'm reading between the lines here, but I'm thinking this church also must have fellowshiped together frequently. They must have 
and also pray together. You know, chapter 2, verse 13 tells us that they received and welcomed the word of God, not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which also effectively works in you who believe. Wow. God's word works in us. This is why it's so important to read it, to meditate on it, to study it, to hear it, talk about it, sing it, apply it. It works in us and then through us. The word of God should be a high priority for us. It is in my life and I pray that it is yours as well. Do whatever you need to do to sh just shut off that TV, the internet, Facebook, the news, other distractions and get your nose in the word of God. It is life changing. Now let's practice and do what Paul teaches us to do and that is to pray for one another and the church. I'm going to pray some verses from Thessalonians, Ephesians, and Colossians. Ready? Here goes. Father, I pray that your church, your bride, would walk in a manner worthy of you, Lord, that we would be fully pleasing to you, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of you. I pray that we would walk with all lowliness and gentleness, with long-suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace, because there is one body and one Spirit, one Lord, one faith, and one baptism. Establish our hearts, we pray, blameless in holiness before you, Lord. We do not want to grieve the Holy Spirit by whom we were sealed for the day of redemption. I pray that we would put aside all bitterness, all wrath, anger, jealousy, malice, and evil speaking of one another. May we be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as you, Father, in Christ forgave us. May our lives be a sweet-smelling aroma unto you, Lord, I pray. Amen. All right, next time we'll talk about 1 Thessalonians chapters 4 and 5. And until then, may the Lord bless you.